definitely feels like 12 outside. Really quick before we dive into the match recap, I want to answer a couple of questions I had. A lot of people asked me why I was running my 12.5 at this at this event. Uh, so the division that we ran was the recce division. This is a new division they started. And essentially the only real rules are it has to be 5.56 and you can't have an optic of greater than 10 power on there. Outside of that, you can basically run whatever you want. And there's no physical movement, meaning you don't have to do like the sandbag tosses. You don't have to do any sled drags, no long movements, none of that stuff. It's purely about shooting. So. When they said that, I was like, good, because I'm too old to be doing that other stuff. I don't want to do it anymore. It hurts my back. It hurts my knees. I'm just old. I was like, okay, cool. Let's sign up for it. It's be a great way to test it. And since I already have an LPVO on my 12.5, and I'm kind of in this, on this journey of trying to figure out what the limitations of 1.556 and what the limitations of this 12.5 truly are, and pushing it to those limits and seeing what the boundaries really are, I was like, you know what? This is a great way to test it, a great way to find out to under stress in competition to push the 12.5 and see what I can do with it. So that's why I ran it. That's the kind of little bit of background behind the recce division. Um, and I just wanted to clarify that because a lot of people asked that in, in the previous video. All right, so we're gonna give you guys a little voiceover for some of these stages. So we start off a pistol and we're shooting at about, I think 30 yards here, 30-ish yards. These targets vary in size. They look very similar in size, but they, they vary. And one of the rules for the TAC games is, is, is you have to finish on that yellow target pistol. And when you do, you have to drop the mag, take your last shot, and then you have to rack and clear on an empty clear. chamber, hammer down an empty chamber. And then that's the way we show clear before we can move on to rifle. So rest, we run up to the top of the uh, container. And up there, we have to make two hits at 309 yards and then 573. Now, I tried to be cute with this and... Hold on. Yeah, I don't know what Taylor's filming here. That's Thank you for that, Taylor. I tried to be cute with this here and decided to dial for 309 and then try to hold the difference for 573 when in reality, I should have just held for 573. So I struggled a bit here at this um, at this particular stage, at the cold start to get off with, getting my heart rate back down, controlling my breathing. I just wasn't making good shots. And this was probably a little bit of nerves too because this is my first stage in any type of PRS match. So... Um, I think a, a few contributing factors there, but yeah, all in all, not a bad start to the day. Happy that I cleaned the pistol side of it, and um, that gave me a little bit of confidence going to the next stage. All right, now this stage was a little funky, so we had to we had a certain area we had to shoot from. So you had to start off obviously here off of this rail, and it had to be within the second post from the the I guess the left. And you go in, we shoot from uh, some designated areas. Now, I got to see Taylor shoot first, and I knew that I had already made more hits than Taylor. So in my head, I'm racing Taylor and not just trying to perform the best I can. And, and in, in hindsight, I, I regret this because I didn't get the data that I, I could have had by actually taking my time and taking these shots. In my head, I was like, oh, I just need to beat Taylor, right? So I've already got more hits, so I can just blow through the rest of this. It doesn't matter if I get hits because he's made no hits on this stage and then yeah just kind of blew off any kind of uh good feedback i could have gotten from actually focusing on the stage and this is what i talked about being inconsistent this is one of those areas i was in inconsistent and didn't approach it the way that i should all right so coming into stage nine we're shooting out at 420 yards and then we have a steel target it's a pretty big target uh for pistol and we're at like 40 yards yeah. shooting that so we would take two shots on pistol two shots on rifle and go back and forth uh within the time limit uh, for me, I, what I struggled with here again was getting into a stable position because you can see this spool, it kind of rocks, right? So after I, I would make a first shot hit, but then the follow-up shot was not, not great. And I think probably just a bit of me rushing it, but probably just not being stable on that rocking spool. And that's something that I want to be better at. Also, I'm not crazy about how my stance is there with one leg back. I'd like, I, if I had to do this again, I'd probably go even uh, with my stance and just uh, widened a little bit to get in the position I want to be in. But yeah, this is all things that, that you learn in hindsight. So, but still all in all, not a, not a terrible stage for me. Um, got some decent hits, scored some good points. Uh, and again, just one of those that 
I was just miserably cold. So this every time we were making hits, it was instilling more and more confidence in me as the day went on. This stage was a struggle bus from the start. So I had a plan. Obviously did not walk the stage and see that my plan was not going to work. So immediately had to bail on that and move to a different part of the helicopter that I did not get to prep on. And I just, just yeah, took a big L on this stage. So struggled to make hits here. Uh, we were shooting at, um, I think this is stage what, stage one. Yeah, stage one. But I don't, I don't remember what the distances were here for the two targets we had to hit. Uh, but it just was not great all the way around. And I just struggled, bust my way through it. Um, even when we went down to prone and then even shooting off with the strap, it just was worse and worse. And so this was one of those moments where I was just really down on myself and had to do a mental reset. Moving on to stage two, this is probably the one of the better stages that I had. I felt really confident in this because this is something I actually practiced before we went to the match, at least mentally, right? So like I, I practiced different positions, different levels. So I felt really confident in this kneeling position, felt really stable, uh, felt really good about trigger press, felt good about dope, everything there. So I just went into this after the last stage, after just completely taking an L there, I came in and was like, hey, look, get your hits. You've got plenty of time. So I wanted to make sure that I was doing everything I needed to do and making my hits what you know whatever amount of time I needed to do that. I did that, felt really good about it, and then while we don't have a, a roof to shoot off of, mentally I had kind of prepared myself of if I had to shoot off of a roof, what would I do? And that came in very handy for this particular stage. There was a couple things I did here that I saw people struggling with. One, guys would lengthen their bipods but because they go out at an angle, it would actually make it even harder because those those bipods are going further down on the roof rather than actually raising the gun up. So I just kept it short and then pulled the gun as far back as I could and kind of off to an angle so the mag wouldn't interfere with the uh, the rooftop. Felt really good, got a lot of good hits, a lot of good points here. And then the other thing I noticed guys with is once they got on the roof, they were really struggling with the, the bipod reaching and trying to get into a good position. So what I did was I put the one leg of the bipod right in the middle of the roof. There was a little, you can see there's a little gap there. So I set that leg there, lengthened the other one as far as I could, and then used my hand underneath it to fill the gap. And that actually helped me create a really stable base to be able to shoot off of there and make make uh, some solid hits there. So I felt really good about that. I want to say that our distances on this one were 360-ish and then 560-ish or 570-ish, if I remember correctly. Somewhere around there, felt really good about this stage. And this kind of picked me back up after that helicopter stage and, and got me back on track. Yeah, so this stage was pretty straightforward. Uh, I believe it was just called walk it out and essentially all we had to do was we had to make shots at three, four, five, and six hundred yards. So we had to uh, put two shots on each target and I want to say the target at each of those was like uh, 1.5 MOA. So 1.5 MOA for the respective distance. So uh, essentially you're just trying to get two hits on each one and walk your way out and um, it was very basic, very straightforward. But this is where having your dope and knowing what it is and dialing for each of those is really important and then getting on those follow-up shots pretty quick. But yeah, another another good stage to build my confidence and kind of rebuild after struggle bus start that I had. Now, this stage took me right back down to reality. So I had a good plan here. Taylor and I had actually walked this stage the day before. We knew where we were gonna go on these rocks. You had to take two shots on each one of these rocks as you as you moved over from left to right. It was the same target and you took two shots from each rock. And so we figured out where were the best places for us to shoot from for our body types and for what we felt like we thought was a good stable position. So did all that, felt like I executed the positions well. I just did not make hits. And the issue came down to at the end of the day, I had the wrong dope dialed and that was just a mental error. So this is where I, again, where I talk about being inconsistent, that one of those things that, you know, pre-stage check that I didn't make sure that my my dope was correct because I should have been making these hits. I believe this is out at 365, 370 yards. There's no reason I shouldn't be making these hits. And so for me to, to struggle like I did was incredibly frustrating. Moving on to stage five, again, from prone, and we've got some different targets just kind of scattered about from left to right. Uh, our first target was at 410 yards, then 520, 645, and then 705. And I felt, again, none of the stages that was good for kind of my confidence to help reset and get back to where I needed to be. Anytime you get to get down and prone, I feel like it's a good way to just kind of reset and see where you're at and what you need to correct. And so this was, again, a very straightforward stage. And we're I think we're shooting two MOA targets at this one, but felt good about it. Got some good points. Didn't make all hits, but got a lot of hits and kind of got me back on track and, and got me going. So we didn't get to finish what we should have on day one. So we actually had to start 
somewhere we shouldn't have on day two. And so this was a cold start coming into stage seven. Now, this that's no excuse for how I performed, but I think it did play a part. But one of those things that I just really struggled on the stage and I couldn't tell you why other than it was just my first first stage of the day and I just didn't come into it with the focus that I should have and the confidence that I felt like I needed and ended up really, really struggling on the stage. I think I only got like two hits, maybe three. Uh, at most, and it just was not a um, not not a good stage for me. Just all around bad, and not the way you want to start a day because it absolutely just crushed my confidence that I walked out of day one with. So moving on, because we shot out of order, we had to kind of bounce around to whatever stages were available and get in where we could so that we could get this the match done in time to where we could drive back. So at this stage, we're at least it's stage twelve. We were shooting from the prone at, I want to say, one and a half MOA, two MOA targets at 300, 400, 500, 600, 700 yards. Again, I struggled here, and I think because my confidence took such a hit at the previous stage, I just didn't do well here because of that. It, some of that carried over, and there was doubt in the back of my mind about, is my dope correct? Is it me? What am I doing wrong? Is my trigger press wrong? And so I got some hits, but I just didn't. From the prone, I should have got a lot more hits at those distances. Uh, the other thing we struggled with on both days was on day one, we did have a 12 o'clock wind. And the issue with 12 o'clock winds, for those of you that know, is they tend to fishtail. So the wind would be doing one thing halfway out, and then it'd be doing something different at the target. So we might have a left to right wind at, let's say, four or 500 yards. But then at 700 yards, we have a right to left wind. So it was something that I really struggled with. Um, some of the bigger caliber guys uh, that, that have better BCs didn't struggle with it as much, but I very much did. And I think this is one of those limitations of the 12.5 platform that when you get some tricky wins like this, it doesn't hold as well. And I found that it was good. You know, the 12.5 the did, I think, did great out to 500-ish yards. Once you get past 500, because wind isn't exactly linear, I feel like that's where it starts to struggle more. Not necessarily in the velocity getting to the target, but holding its line consistently in wind. So that's another discussion for another day, but yeah, that, that's where we started to find one of the issues. So jumping over to a pistol stage, this is a compi combined pistol stage, 13 and 14 were both pistol. And I, I know this footage is gonna look a little funny because Taylor actually filmed it in slow-mo. I don't know how he did it, why he did it, but he did, and so I've just sped it up so it doesn't take too too long. But um, yeah, so had had an issue here uh, in between stages, and this is one of the issues with staccatos that I don't like. It's that the mags will overseat, and everybody's like, "Well, you got to use the correct base pads." Even with the correct base pad, like is shown in this video, it will overseat and get stuck on the extractor. So staccato, get your life together. I think they've got a new grip module coming out that'll fix that, but. Anyways, clean shop on, on this stage, shot it clean, felt great after that. Actually, on both pistol stages, I think I went 100% on pistol shots this entire match. So I felt really good about that. Again, just another confidence boosting stage to help me reset mentally. And then because of that, I was able to go into stage 13, which is the uh, the strap. And what I did here was I actually hung it off of, if you see it, notice, I actually pulled the bipod back a little bit to give me the space in anticipation that we might have to shoot off of a strap so that I could let the strap hang under the front of the gun. And this gives me the best balance between the front of the gun and then the back of the gun. Because if you put the strap in the middle or close to the magwell, you don't get as good of, I don't feel like it's as stable. So I don't want to put input into the gun without there being balance of that input coming from the other side. So this stage, because I walked away with confidence from the pistol stage, that carried over here. And we were shooting larger targets, again, at three, four, five, six, seven hundred yards. But I almost cleaned the stage, and I think I just didn't get my hits at 700 and maybe a miss at 600, but did really well on this stage. And it was a big confidence booster because a lot of guys struggled at this stage. And so for me to get the hits that I did with my 12.5 really got me back on track. It was it was fun to walk out just getting you know your, your two consecutive hits at each distance. So uh, that was awesome, especially on such a tough stage. Like shooting off that strap is tough. Thankfully, it didn't have any slack or bounce in it but it just it is it's tough shooting off of that all right so our last stage i don't remember which one this is but again we're shooting pistol from the top of the containers and this one had again varying size targets and we finished on the yellow like we started felt really good about it it was just a little a little slower than i would have liked but uh, we didn't shoot pistol much so it was like cold and just yeah excuses excuses lots of excuses from there we go in and then you have the uh these four diamonds that we had to shoot from. So we shot from these, I don't know if you can see it here, 
but I'm actually on my tippy toes to shoot from this first one. It's just one of the things you just kind of got to overcome, right? But I felt good. I felt confident because of the, the previous four stages, and I knew that I wanted to end on a good note. I knew I wanted to have a good uh, finish to this match. So I was like, okay, so let's focus. Let's get our as many hits as we can and do everything right so that when we leave, we know that whatever goes wrong is because of me and not because of the gun or misinformation or any of that. So got a lot of hits here. I think I ended up getting six, seven, maybe eight hits here on rifle. So felt good about that. And I think we were shooting at 573, I think is the distance we had. Okay. Yeah, so 573 was our distance and we were shooting, I want to say like a three MOA target. So uh, pretty challenging. Again, these are positions that I practiced at home uh, thanks to yeah. Bruiser and his, his ladder drill. So I practiced these. Felt confident, felt comfortable in, in the positions that I was in. And then uh, moving on to the, the last two uh, slots right here. These were a little bit trickier for me just because the heights were a little awkward, but it is what it is. Didn't get my hits there. I don't know what it was. I don't know why, what I was doing, but that's something I'm going to work on more. Um, okay. going forward. So that was my experience at the TAC Games. Again, it was an incredible match, and I think that um, it's something that that a lot of you probably should sign up for or would really enjoy if you signed up for. What, what I'll do different going in is I'm tempted to run my 12.5 again just because I know some of the performance out of it that didn't go well is because of me and not because of the gun. But I think going into it, what I would recommend for somebody who's going to do this match, make sure you're, you know your dope. Make sure you cal your muzzle velocity and then cal your DSF so that when you're building your, your range card or your stage card, you, you have good information going in there so that you're confident about the shots that you're taking. There was a couple of stages I didn't do that and I wasn't confident and I was getting misses. And so that was me. The other thing that I really struggled with was wind calls. So a lot of my misses came not necessarily because I was doing things wrong in terms of building my position or trigger pull, more so that I just really struggled to read wind. Now, I, I'm still fairly new to this long range precision game, but that's one area where I know that I struggle. And I know that a 12 o'clock and six o'clock wind are very tricky. And so we had 12 o'clock wind the first day, six o'clock wind the second day. And I struggled with that because there was times where I would see the mirage in the middle of the range and it's going one way, but then the mirage at our target is going a different way. So Learning to understand that and getting more reps in reading that and understanding wind, I think will help me in the next one. Um, but that's something that I definitely need to work on. So that's something I'm going to work with with Bruiser on. And then when I go up to another Ridgeline course, I'll continue to work and try to improve my ability to read wind and then make good wind calls so that I'm I'm making hits. Because I remember uh, the stage with the rocks where I talked about where I just um, had the had the wrong uh, dope dialed. Uh, the guy said he's like, hey, look, you were shooting an MOA group you were just hitting hitting off target, one, because of bad wind, but two, because I am uh, got the wrong dope dialed. So if I do everything right, if I'm consistent and actually focus on stages, I feel like I can, I can perform even better than I did. Taking fifth overall was instilled a lot of confidence, but I know there's a lot left in the tank that, could perf that I could perform better than what I did. So that's probably the biggest things I'm going to do is, you know, really work on wind calls and then make sure I have good dope for whatever gun that I take, whether it's the 12.5 or uh, the SPR that I'm currently building. The other thing I want to talk about is who is this competition for? Now, this was the first time they did the recce division. And, and when we saw it, I saw the requirements. I saw what it would entail. I was like, immediately sign me up. I want to be a part of this. I think a lot of guys who have LPVOs, who have red dot magnifiers, a lot of you who just bought a bunch of ACOGs, I think this is a great way to get out and test your gear. Not necessarily saying you're going to go into it and win it, but going out and actually testing your gear, right? Can you make those hits? Can you make three MOA hits with your red dot magnifier? Can you do it with your BDC? Can you do it with your ACOG? Because I see a lot of guys say, oh, well, I can, I can do what you do with an LPVO with my BDC or with my ACOG. Cool. This is a great way to test it and find out for yourself, right? Like you don't have to prove anything to me. This is a great way to test your gear and see, can I actually do this when there's stress, when there's time on the clock? when I'm in competition with somebody else, can I do that? And I think that's why this is, is such a great opportunity for a lot of people because the gear requirements are so open. You can run whatever you want. And if you don't want to do all the fitness stuff, that's not a part of this. So you, it's really purely a great opportunity to focus on your gear and your kit and see like, hey, is this the best solution for what I want to do? And if you want to make hits out to six, 700 yards, you can do it. Like people told me, you shouldn't be able to make hits with a 5.56 five, and a 12.5 out to 700 yards. And we did it consistently with a 1-8, to eight, not from a vice, not from a tripod, from unconventional positions. It, it was cool to see what you're capable of doing 
and how you can perform with the tools that you have, right? At the end of the day, nobody's telling you you have to buy this thing or that thing. It's like, hey, look, if you wanna run that, run that. But this is a great way to see what you can actually accomplish with your tools. So I think this division is great. I hope to see it just continue to expand. Hope to see more of you out there. I think it would be cool to see some of y'all sign up for these in the future. Taylor and I will definitely be out there. I know a bunch of other average Joes have already uh, said they're gonna sign up for the next one. Something I would like to see changed in the next one, and this is just me. Um, I think Jeremy puts on great matches. I think they did a great job with this one. The mix of different positions we shot from the different distances. But something I would like to see is maybe like a two gun or USPSA style stage where you it's more cqb ish if you will but more uh close close targets where you have to work that optic at close distances right so you you have to shoot it at one power or you have to shoot from your offset dot or whatever it is i think that would be super cool where we had a stage like that just to mix it up and just to challenge the recce guys in a different way now the guys who are at the shooting sniper challenge maybe it doesn't apply to them but it'd be cool to throw that stage in as like a bonus for us recce guys i think that'd be a ton of fun so maybe uh, jeremy if you see this maybe that's something we can add in i would be happy to help with that uh, but thank you again to jeremy and the tack games and thanks again to bauer who are sponsors of now of the channel, but also of the series and made this happen. Uh, they hooked me up with getting that Surefire set up so that I, I could run it for the match. So thank you to them. Uh, make sure to check them out. Links are down in the description. Make sure you hit that like, subscribe, karate chop that bell so you get notified every time I upload a video. And I will see you guys in the next one. You get it. Hey, you. Listen, I'm here to win, but so far Jimmy's cheap. There's only two of us. All right. I mean, by 20, but we're in the top two. Anyways, but uh, yeah, Jimmy, we have agreements on what we're going to do. And Jimmy's like, oh, I'm going to do whatever I want. Oh, I got a lead on him now. Bullshit. Watch what happens next. He said we're going to shoot 10 rounds a piece. I got 50 loaded. I just realized like, when I wink at the camera, you can't see it. Do that instead. Six hours for this shit. Six hours. But I tell you what, when it's all said no, I know for a fact I'll be taking either first or second. You know, there's a deep field, deep, deep field. There's a lot of good shooters here. But I tell you, third through, third through nineteen or twenty, whatever there is. Yeah, you know, have fun with bronze. You know, because we got silver and gold on lock. You know what I mean? By the way, if you want to look for tech tips later on. Try Pinterest, because I'm not any good at this shit. I asked you. You fucking. Ooh, yeah. Gravity.